So how do they do it? How, if you're a bird, do you become something else? The obvious way to change your shape if you're a bird, and this is what I think most people assume is what's going on when you see one of these shapeshifters do its transformation for the first time, is use your wings. I mean, that's the thing that I think our brains look at birds and we think, oh, if they're going to make some unusual shape. It's because they're lifting out their wings and they're wrapping it around their head or they're doing something with their wings. And in fact, some of the birds that are the shape-shifting birds of paradise, the ones that transform themselves, namely the rifle birds, that's what they use. But their wings aren't like normal wings. All the flight feathers are rounded instead of being pointy like they typically are for flight, so the feathers look different. And that's how, how they make this really nice, kind of perfect oval shape or ovoid shape. But the other species, they are using not their wings, so they're not using an appendage, but they're using series of feathers that line their body, the same kind of feathers that all birds have in terms of where they're found on the body, and they're lining them up into precise ways to create this meta structure, if you will, that's a composite of all these little individual parts, all those little individual feathers. So they're using those special muscles in the skin, lifting them out precisely, putting them into the place that they need to line up and look like this unusual form. So it's easy for us to think about how you might do that with your arms, your appendages, but it's really hard for us to think about how you would do that with your feathers. We don't have any analog. It would be like trying to figure out how we could you know, create, a, create a mohawk without hairspray, basically. <laughs> By, by just, you mean, moving the muscles yeah, on your head to lift your hair. That's right. what I mean. Yeah, the, the same muscles that we use to move our eyebrows around, but somehow doing that with something like the hair on top of our head and, and making a, you know unusual shape out of it. I mean, you know, it doesn't make any sense to us. Maybe, maybe to a bird it makes more sense, but that's yeah, pretty amazing. Shapeshifting is not really a technical term. Is this strategy of turning into a black <laughs> oval common in birds or found in any of the other birds? Certainly there's some other birds that utilize their body parts to modify their shape. A common one I think that people, at least in, in North America, are familiar with would be a turkey. So a male turkey, when he's strutting himself, he fluffs out his feathers and he fans his tail. And you know, it, it basically, if you're a bird with, with feathers and you stick them all out in some ways, you're going to create something that's sort of blob or oval-like. So it's not too much of a a stretch to think that, you know, this can happen. But no bird that I know of do it quite the way that birds of paradise do, where the transition is so extreme and so precise, and it's not just the spread tail, but it's a combination of feathers from the tail, the sides, back of the neck, that all line up to make a form that looks so unbird-like when it's done and is so specialized and has been incorporated in, in a very precise way. That level of, of modification or that level of shape-shifting, I don't think has any precedence in any other birds. So that black oval, did it just evolve once in Birds of Paradise? And that's sort of, they got it, and then everybody has a variation on the theme? It's, it's possible, although it's not really clear, that the, that the desire to have a black oval-like shape as the thing that's the object of affection might have evolved once, meaning that females have this preference for things that look bigger than the body of the bird, that are black and that are highlighted with colors. But what's definitely not the same is that the way different species of birds of paradise males have evolved to present that oval shape. So some do it with their wings, some do it with feathers of, of their sides, of their breasts and their flanks that they lift up around their head. Others do it with a different set of feathers from the, from the breast and flanks they wrap around their body in another orientation. Superb Bird of Paradise creates its oval shape by using modified feathers on the back of its neck that it lifts around its head. So even though they superficially look similar at the level of being black ovoids, they're fundamentally different in the way that they've evolved over time through, through sexual selection to be an oval. One of the things about an oval is it matters how you look at it. Once they've transformed, it's all about perspective, right? Yeah. This transformation into this ovoid shape typically happens when the female is in view of the male and she's showing these signs of either coming and flying and landing right where he's going to be, or he has some expectation that she's going to arrive. He's definitely always presenting and, and facing her so that she sees the, 
the part of the ovoid presentation that has the, the highlights and the colored feathers or has the proper shape. And if the female moves, the male just has to move with her so that she can always see the part that she's supposed to see. Because if you, if you look at any one of these shape-shifting birds of paradise from the wrong side, it's not as impressive as it is from the side that the, that the females have selected. You ask anybody, you can ask a, a, you know, a second grader or anybody, an adult, to draw a picture of a bird, and you're basically going to get one of two things. You're going to get a line with you know, some wings coming out, and pretty much all birds, when they're flying, they kind of have that, that wing bird shape, and then maybe this kind of like you know, sitting perch bird shape. But you certainly wouldn't, in your wildest imagination, draw a bird that looks like it's wearing a ballerina's tutu or some kind of psychedelic smiley face, right? I mean, this, this is just outrageous and without precedent. And, you know, that's just cool. How could you not want to know how on earth birds came to use these kinds of shapes for courtship display?